Welcome back. Uh, field notebook entries, uh, video number three. Uh, how to write in it, uh, how to you know, compose your entries, sketching, lettering, uh, what you need to pay attention to. So let's take a look. How do you write in a field notebook? Well, it's obviously handwritten. There's no computer that you drag around. And uh, one of the uh, skills to have is the lettering. Lettering uh, print, basically uh, printing into your field notebook using hand pencils. Uh, numbering, also another one, how to write numbers in your field notebook. And how to use abbreviations. It is okay in the field notebook to, first of all, not write full sentences. And second of all, you can abbreviate till the cows come home. I mean, you can really do these, um, these abbreviations. Well, let me give you an overview here. So your blank pages again, that's a familiar site. Um, handwriting into a field notebook. Now use some kind of a legible hand print format for your letters. Um, example, I don't know how you write, but it should be legible so I can, I can read it. Um, it's usually straightforward. Um, for numbers, it can get a little tricky. Uh, and I will show you why. So here's a, here's a common number print that you will use. And uh, is this a 1 or is this, this is an L, a lowercase L, or is this an uppercase I? Um, so if you do it a little different, you distinguish those, of course, um, lowercase Ls. That's hard to do, so you need to come up with something to distinguish that one. The same is true for the 7s. Some 7s look like 1s. Um, and of course, my my favorite one is the zero, um, because is it an an O or a zero? Uh, and that's a little trick you can use to distinguish those. And in case there's any question about it, um, best to write a zero kind of with a line through. I make this a habit when I write in a field notebook. Now you may forget. It, it's okay if you forget. I'm not a stickler about it. But um, especially when you do coordinates, this is an O162 P3, something like this, then was it O1 or 01? And then it becomes kind of an, an interesting side note. Um, now, again, let me reiterate, you don't have to write full sentences. Some students make the mistake, they, they have to write the same way they do in a field notebook as if they would take notes in their notebook. No, you use abbreviations, there are no full sentences, not even full paragraphs needed. Um, and abbreviations are absolutely acceptable, some kind of a shorthand that you come up with. Um, in geology, a lot of things are self-explanatory. You don't even have to explain what this means. There's a whole list of abbreviations that have been used. Um, as long as you think the next person can decipher it, it is okay to use these abbreviations. Um, here's some common ones. They are in your in your notebook. You know, above ABV, abundant A, B, and T, acicular albite AB. By the way, for minerals, there's a whole list of how minerals should be abbreviated. Um, it is a abbreviations list given by the um, Mineralogical Society of America. Uh, you can come up with your own too without W slash O with. It's just the W, maybe with a slash smaller, larger. Um, again, these are not set in stone. You don't have to use those exactly as you see them here. Um, but it's a, a really, really good example of what you can use. And it's understandable for those geologists who read your field notebook. By the way, in your field methods booklet, it's on page seven. There is a list if you want to get familiar with that. So totally acceptable abbreviations. Now, one of the common skills is to sketch in a field notebook. If you want to have a colored pencil, some students like to use colored pencil because it's great. It's not required. You can stipple. And you do not have to be a good artist. 
but you should be somewhat accurate. So sketching some sketching skills. We'll go over some examples for you to see how would you sketch in a notebook, right? And label stuff in your sketches. I mean, you may not be the artist and it may not be immediately obvious what you are actually drawing there. Um, so having a label might be helpful. Let me start with an outcrop, something like that. It's in Britain. There's a lot of grass growing here. There's some rock layers. You can see um, definitely layered right here, broken into these segments. Looks like the whole thing is tilted as well. And uh, then there are some other rocks on top of that one. So by some observations, let's see what we have there. This is, seems to be some sandstone layers right down there. And that whole segment over here is some kind of an igneous sill that shows layered characteristics. A bottom of the igneous sill somewhat different than the middle part, the central part of the igneous sill. Okay, how would you sketch something like this? Well, simple. Here's your notebook page. You can turn it sideways, try to sketch it. And you must be absolutely sure in your sketch to put a scale in there. But so something like this. This is a picture down there. This is grass. Well, you can even write it down if you don't want to draw it. Well, makes sense, right? Leave it blank. That's the sky. And this is the outcrop. And here's you see sandstone beds. I try to be as accurate as I can, especially with the size, to draw them to the correct thickness. And there's actually some columnar jointing. I can write this down and mark it or label it. And down there, there's a fine green, a fine green diorite, a dolerite down there um, that I have identified. And I mark this one on there. So this the sketch is very, very simple. It should be drawn to scale. You should have a scale on there so people get an idea. We're talking about, you know, the Himalayas here or kind of this, something the size of your of your writing desk. And um, this is as simple as a sketch is. Now, again, if you want to use colored pencils and want to bring them with you in the field, by all means, do that. But a sketch can be simple. It just needs to be accurate as all that is needed. Um, now, again, let me reiterate. I will deduct points for that. Always draw a scale somewhere when you give me a drawing. All right, let's try another one. Here is a, uh, looks like a um, matrix supported large scale brecciated mud flow. I don't know what it is. There's an umbrella for scale, right? Um, if you know how big the umbrella is, then you can transfer that scale fairly easily. And again, what did my sketch look like? Again, it can be simple, but it should be accurate. So here is what I have drawn. My umbrella is about a meter, so that's my, my meter size here. And you see finer matrix and angular fragments. Now here's something really important. Don't just randomly draw some of these fragments here. Try to match them with the fragments and the shapes you see. Something like that. So this kind of little triangle here, you can see that one here. Try to match it and draw it to scale. There is this piece angular drawn to scale. There's this piece sticking out drawn to scale. And so forth, oh, piece right here drawn to scale. So make sure that you don't just give us an idea what it looks like. Try to copy it. Again, as you can see, my drawing is not fancy. Not at all. But... It is an accurate representation of what I see in the field. Um, so make sure your observation is accurately reflected somehow. And again, the famous scale, the famous scale needs to be on there. Yep. Must be important. I'm saying it again. I'm writing it. You can copy it. Now, what would a complete entry look like in a field notebook? Well, let's go over it and see what you should capture as you make observations in the field. All right? First of all, the page numbers. We've talked about this one before. Page numbers are essential. 
Next thing is the date. Actually, most field notebooks have a little um, space for date. So write down the date. Um, we know when you have taken these, these readings. Um, give it a title. So there's an excursion to pegmatitic intrusion right there. I'm going to write this one down so I know what it is. Again, it can be shorthand just to give you a reminder. Oh, yeah, this is where I was. Or this was a professor-led one. Whatever it may be, it gives you some some idea of where we're going. Okay? Now, write an objective or goal in there. Sometimes it helps. What are you actually trying to capture? Are you just trying to take random observations or are you after on something? And here we are after the understanding between the relationship between... Uh, uh, case bar and muscovite and quartz in the pegmatite dike. And you see, I'm using abbreviations here. Um, uh, makes total sense. I mean, even um, if you had a geology 1010 class, you can understand what I'm trying to say. Right? Um, so what we're trying to do, that's a good thing. The next thing is give a location. Where are you going? Or where is this actually happening? Now, you can, of course, use the GPS coordinates and write them down. But if this is not possible, you need to give kind of a roadside log. Um, US 36 Jamestown turnoff at Greenbrier Inn into Lefton Canyon Road. Uh, follow road exactly 4.5 miles to outcrop on north side. Parking limited. Watch for bikers. But it says it all. You know what? Even if I want to take your field notebook and go where you have been and see what you have seen, uh, you already given me a hint. Oh, yeah, I need to watch for something. That's a really great location um, kind of combo. The next thing is... If you do it as a professor-led or handout-led or something, there might be some comments. There might be a lecture uh, you would like to title it as such. You know, um, here might be a lecture that has been given, and you write down in short: in granitic magma melt fractionated into superheated H2O, melt lower viscosity, greater molecular freedom allowed, larger euhedral crystal growth in cracks of host rocks (Rx rocks). Right. Something that the lecture or the handout gave you, you just summarize it. Again, it's not a complete paragraph. I don't even worry about punctuation too much. I'm just going to write it down and you understand what it means. It's a field notebook. Sometimes it's it's cool to give a little bit of a weather background. It has two reasons. Number one is if you write something about inaccessibility to a certain place, and I find out in your weather comment that you went there during a rainstorm, I will say, well, duh, of course. But here is a weather, partly cloudy, cool, no precip, some snow in area. Oh, must have been cold. Um, again, if I read your field notebook as a colleague, as a fellow geologist, maybe because the snow was something covered, maybe you missed something and it might be worthwhile to revisit the area. So it doesn't have to be long, maybe, you know, a one-liner or so. That might be really good. And then observations in your entry with detail and measurements. Whenever you can, in your write-up, please give um numeric value something you have measured right here's a here's a description pegmatite dike cut through nice schist of idaho springs formation uh, dike tilt 28 degrees dike with approximate 1.5 meter central part quartz milky to massive about one meter maximum um okay written this down both sides of uh, quartz, uh, one half meter zone of euhedral case bar up to 40 centimeters, right? And muscovite mica booklets, uh, 10 to 15 centimeters, out of fringe, small one to two centimeter quartz case bars for minor muscovite. So it'll give you some kind of a layout. Of course, these are all words. You go and eh, not kind of seeing this one. So now a sketch would be awesome. Let's use a sketch, a written something down, sketch something, label it. So here's my metamorphic rocks. Here is this quartz case bar, muscovite, so on, small crystals, quartz, milky and massive, muscovite case bar zone. And 
Here is my scale, 1.5 meters. And then, of course, with big Muscovites like that, you know, I cannot resist the collecting a few. And this is what these X's are for. So I mark my collection on there. And I then mark the sampling points, and then I give my sampling number, a short description, what I have actually sampled or collected from these places. Of course, you should have a similar number then in your Ziploc bags as you put it in, and you reference them into your field notebooks. So this would be what a field notebook page should ought to look like as you make observations. Of course, the expedition your excursion may be longer it may go over several pages more drawings this is okay next observation um this is sort of how you compile a complete notebook entries now uh, notebook purists say you should never erase in a notebook now i'm not that much of a stickler they say if you make a mistake strike it out and write it below in the corrected form. Um, sometimes it helps to reassess your thought process if we do. Now, this is for the absolute purest notebook guardians of the galaxy, if you want, um, that say that. I am okay with you erasing as long as you don't make it smudgy and hard to read. What's really difficult to read is if you're just trying to write over it. Um, that sometimes makes it very ille uh, illegible. I can't read it. So if the eraser doesn't work, if it smudges and you can't write over it, just scratch it out, draw a line through and write it again. It does not need to be perfect. And notebooks are not error free as far as this is concerned. They should be error free as far as observations are concerned. Now, for drawing, stippling, if you don't have colored pencils, it's great to have some what we call lithologic symbols for sketching that you can stipple or hash or shade onto your notebook page. Here are some common ones I want to show you, um, and they look like sandstone, usually dots, siltstone, dash dots, shale, uh, uh, dashes, Coal is a crosshatch, limestone, this brick pattern, a dolomite or dolostone, this uh, slanted brick pattern, and volcanic rocks are often little V's or X's or little random uh, dashes, and metamorphic rocks are often you know, look like, like squiggly lines uh, across. It makes a representation, and then you can easily in a drawing distinguish between rock types. Um, Again, these are fairly common, the way they have been used. There is a whole list in your field uh, uh, handbook of patterns you can use to kind of stipple in there. So page 8 in your field methods book has these, um, these patterns in greater detail. And that sort of gives you a short overview of how and what to write in a field notebook as you collect your data.